Hey everybody, this is Modern Refugee. I wanted to do a video for you guys today on uh, manually operated uh, rifles. Um, more uh, specifically, uh, bolt action uh, rifles. Um, we all know the disadvantages of uh, the older style firearms like your lever actions and your uh, bolt action uh, rifles. They don't have uh, the ammunition capacity of the uh, modern uh, uh, rifles like an AR, um, they're not semi-automatic, they have to be uh, op operated manually, so uh, that puts them at a disadvantage on uh, how fast that you can shoot. Um, but there are some advantages um, to these uh, manually operated rifles, and uh, that's what I wanted to talk to you about uh, today, and I got a few things laid out here on the workbench uh, where I go over some of the uh, strategies to make these rifles a little bit more relevant in uh, this day and age. Uh, specifically, the rifle I'm going to show you guys here today is uh, one of my backup guns. This is a uh, bolt action Remington uh, 700 that I got a uh, paint job on here. The caliber for this particular gun is uh, 243, and this is also a youth model, so it's got a shorter stock on it. I'm going to get into that stuff here in just a minute. Um, but the first thing I want to talk about on these uh, bolt action or these manually uh, operated rifles is uh, one of the uh, what I think is one of their uh, real benefits and that's their proliferation. Um, the proliferation of these rifles is uh, tremendous. There's literally millions of these firearms in, uh, in North America. Um, so there's a good chance uh, no matter where you are after collapse you might uh, run into one of these rifles. Um, so I think it's uh, an advantage to uh, know a little bit about them so that's what I want to uh, talk to you about today. Um, Bolt action rifles are uh, fairly simple to operate. Um, there's only two or three uh, uh, actions that need to be done to uh, actually employ one of these firearms. Um, open up the action here on this. Basically, you push uh, ammunition down into this uh, action, and that's actually what loads it. Most of these bolt action rifles hold between uh, three and five rounds of uh, ammunition, and once this is uh, bottomed out, you just close it. And even if this has a uh, detachable box magazine on the bottom, you can still load um, bolt action rifles right through the top of the action. The safety is uh, usually located somewhere in this area, no matter what uh, the rifle is. Um, like I said, this one here is a uh, Remington um, 700 in 243. Um, getting into the 243, that uh, gets into uh, another benefit of these rifles and that most of these bolt action uh, or lever action uh, rifles that are out there are non-military calibers and uh, we all know how uh, the ammunition shortage that's going on right now. Uh, military calibers, uh, 556, 6.2x39, 9mm, these uh, rounds are pretty much gone. They're very hard to find, very hard to locate, but uh, because these rifles, a lot of these rifles take a non-military caliber, they're not as uh, popular with uh, the people that shoot a lot. So uh, nine chances in ten, if you walk into a local hardware store, you're not going to find a box of nine millimeter, but you are going to find a box of uh, 243 and uh, or 270 or 3030, any of these uh, other uh, non-military calibers that these are, uh, these are chambered in. Another thing, um, a lot of these bolt action rifles are larger. They shoot a larger cartridge. Now this 243 right here is actually a 100 grain uh, bullet. They do make lighter ones but I prefer 100 grains and a 100 grain bullet is almost double the size of uh, the bullet that a uh, AR-15 shoots. Uh, most AR-15s are uh, uh, the ammunition that people shoot are either 55 or 62 grain bullets and this being a 100 grain bullet makes it uh, uh, fairly effective on uh, 250 pound beast let's say. Um, this is a youth model rifle. Um, I like youth model rifles for a couple different reasons. Most lever actions are short like a, a youth model as well and that's if you're uh, shooting this with a lot of heavy clothing on the um, the shorter stock makes it easier to shoot and it's 
cold up here most of the time. There's a lot of times in the year when people are going to be wearing heavy clothing. Also, sh people of a shorter stature can pick up these youth rifles and shoot them uh, much more effectively um, because they're not reaching way out to hold on to their uh, weapon. Um, another thing on this that I want to talk to you guys about is uh, the optics. There's sh most uh, bolt-action rifles are going to have some type of optic on it. This right here is a uh, Leupold 3 by 9 by 40 Rifleman. It's not the most expensive uh, scope that a Leupold makes, but it's still a quality scope. And if you're actually setting up, knock my stuff around there, if you're actually setting up one of these rifles, um, you want a good quality optic on it. So you probably don't want a $60 um, Walmart scope on uh, a rifle that you're going to uh, depend on. You want something a little bit better. And uh, that's what this Rifleman is here. It's not an overly expensive uh, optic, but it's a very, uh, very good optic for the money. And uh, the camouflage pattern that's on this. Why would I take a rifle like this and go ahead and uh, spray paint it, basically, is what I've done here. And um, the reason I done that is, is a solid black rifle sticks out like a sore thumb. Even at distance, if somebody would be looking at you at a distance, a solid black rifle just really, really sticks out. Even animals will notice if you're carrying a firearm when you're going out in, uh, in the woods. So uh, having a rifle that you have camouflage like this, you can be a little bit more discreet. Now this pattern right here I made with just uh, three different colors of spray paint and a little bit of mesh. And uh, I made this pattern specifically to blend into uh, the local tree barks. Um, we live here in Michigan and six months of the year, there's no leaves on the trees. So uh, it's good to have uh, a camouflage pattern that blends in with, uh, with your environment. And uh, the grays and the dark browns of, uh, of tree bark is uh, basically what I wanted on this rifle and what I've done with it. Um, another thing, um, this is going to sound a little weird, but, uh, you know, after a collapse, you might have to ditch this rifle somewhere. So you might have to stash uh, your gear somewhere to go interact with somebody or not to look like a threat if you're going to uh, be going into a uh, group of people or something. And then you're going to want to backtrack later and uh, retrieve your gear. And I think that's something that isn't talked about a lot is being able to uh, stash your gear here or there. Um, if uh, the need arises um, and something that's camouflage is going to be much easier to uh, hide than uh, something that's just a solid uh, black color, at least in my opinion. Um, I'll talk to you about the sling setup here. Um, a rifle needs a, uh, needs a sling, especially one that I've got tasked the way I do. And uh, one of the things that uh, you can use to mount a sling on a rifle is a little gadget like this. And what this is is a little piece of Velcro that slides over the stock of uh, the rifle. And then it's got some clips here where you can uh, clip different attachments, even paracord if you had it, onto this um, so it can uh, it can hang freely on your body. Um, I prefer for uh, these bolt-action rifles um, these IDF slings here. This is a uh, Israeli uh, military sling. These are very inexpensive. These are maybe 20 bucks uh, shipped. At least this one was when I purchased it. And they have uh, these little loops like this that can also come with these rifles. And what you're going to want to do is, is you're going to want to take the swivel stud. This is a uh, steel swivel stud that I have here. And all you do is you just uh, thread this loop through and you have a way to clip the sling on. These IDF slings have these type of attachments on them so they can just clip on real quickly um, to this style of attachment and uh, this style of attachment can also be threaded through these plastic notches on these little uh, stock holders here and uh, it'll give you a place to uh, clip your rifle on, uh, on your body. Now what's going to happen with this uh, gun here if you put uh, you put that uh, stock um, sling deal on it's going to slide over it's going to sit on the stock something like this and what that's going to do is actually going to give you a spot for your uh for your uh, sling attachment to be on the top of your uh your stock and why is that important because when uh you're carrying the gun you're going to want to carry the gun right here where you can access it you're not going to want it on your back or down low or something like that you're going to want it right here and if that swivel um, attachment is on the top of the stock the gun's going to hang right here almost in a two-point uh, configuration as they would call it so anyway that's a good way to um, 
to carry um, these bolt action rifles. And because this model here is a youth model, it's uh, it's going to hang uh, fairly light on your body. It's not going to get in the way. It's not going to get caught on brush or uh, anything as you're moving uh, through it because it has a lot shorter barrel on it. Now uh, I'm going to get to the ammunition here. Um, I already showed you the box here. This is just basic Remington uh, core lock 100 grain ammunition for this particular 243. And because a 243 is a kind of a smaller cartridge, there's several different ways you can carry ammunition for this uh, particular gun. And this is kind of an old style um, leather ammunition holder here that goes on uh, goes on to a belt. And uh, these are all right, um, but you have to have a belt. Uh, you have to take your belt off to uh, slide this on. So you can't just throw this on real quick. This would be all right for a pocket or something, but you're going to have to uh, undo your belt to uh, put this on. Um, but there's a couple other ways that you can carry uh, ammunition, and that's with these uh, older military-style pouches. And um, this one here, this old military-style uh, magazine pouch, I've uh, placed a piece of foam in it. And all I've done is take a sharp pocket knife and make slits in that foam, and then I just push the ammunition directly down into it. It doesn't rattle around much, and it keeps the ammunition facing right straight up for me to access it. Now all I do got to do if I want to put this on my belt is uh, undo these, uh, these Alice clips that are on here, and uh, this can slide over my belt. I can push the Alice clips down, and this goes right on my belt without having to take it off. And... Uh, Got about 20 rounds in here, maybe a couple more. It all depends on uh, how uh, how much you want to cramp the pouch. Um, but this is another way that you can carry uh, ammunition. This is an AR-15 pouch, just a single one here, an old military surplus one that I picked up somewhere. And uh, what I've done is I, I have slid the plastic... Um, holder that this ammunition comes into. A lot of different ammunitions are going to have some type of holder like this in the box. That'll just slide right into this pouch. You just slide it in. You got it all. You got an access point here where you can grab some ammunition and uh, the flap keeps everything in place. And again, because this is Molly, you can just unsnap this, slide it over your belt or wherever that you need it and just snap it down. And it's going to uh, hold it uh, fairly quickly where you don't have to fairly steady. And uh, you can put it on your body uh, fairly quickly without having to take your belt or anything off. Um, just wanted to talk about these uh, few things here as far as... Uh, uh, making these uh, older style rifles a little bit more effective and uh, in a collapse type situation, make them a little bit more user friendly. Some of the things that I do here, like I said, camouflaging uh, your guns is uh, great. It uh, allows you to be not be seen at a, a distance. Even uh, stainless steel rifles have their place. Um, a stainless steel rifle will actually blend in quite well if there's snow on the ground. The uh, light gray and the uh, matted gray of a lot of stainless steel rifles will uh, just disappear in the uh, white gray woods if it's uh, snowing outside. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Give you guys another quick look here at the uh, at my little uh, SHTF backup rifle that I have here. Like I said, it's just a basic Remington 700 uh, youth model and a 243. Just uh, something that's kind of handy to have around. Easy to use, simple to uh, show somebody how to use this. If I needed somebody to uh, use this rifle, I could show them in probably five minutes how to uh, effectively operate this rifle. I've got it on, uh, let's see here, I've got it on three power. Keep it uh, cranked down. Lower power is uh, better as far as uh, shooting at closer ranges in case you have to shoot this at closer ranges. But you still have the uh, excess uh, magnification. You can crank that scope up if you want to shoot out at distance. So anyway, this is uh, Modern Refugee. Just thought I'd uh, share a few of those uh, tips to uh, make some of these uh, older style rifles a little bit more effective in uh, this day and age. But anyway, I want you guys to have a... Uh, Great day. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. Got a little information, a little entertainment out of it. But anyway, you guys take care.